All across Michigan, county, city, and township clerks are firing on all cylinders administering November's election. Hundreds of thousands of voters have either turned in their absentee ballots or voted early in person. That latter option, that's new in our state this year. But a lot of prep has gone into making sure that the process runs smoothly. There was a big turnout on Saturday, a big turnout on Sunday. And so we thought Monday will be a lull because now it's a business day. People are at work. Nope, Monday was also huge. So by the time we get to Election Day, we're going to be, uh, I wouldn't say we'll be out of voters, but there'll be a lot fewer people uh, uh, standing in line on Election Day than, uh, than normally. Today, we're going to talk with two county clerks to learn about what exactly goes into coordinating the voting process and what you need to know as you prepare to submit your own ballot and watch those results roll in on the 5th. This is Stateside. I'm April Baer. Lawrence Kestenbaum is clerk and Register of Deeds for Washtenaw County. Larry, welcome back to Stateside. It's good to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. As I mentioned, this year Michigan's doing some early voting in accord with new state laws. Is that something that your office had experimented with before this year? Uh, well, we've done it now twice, uh, first in the presidential primary in February and then in the regular primary in August. This was mandated by the constitutional amendment that the voters adopted in 2022. Back in the in the primary, the, the, the number of voters who took advantage of this option, nine days of early voting for basically every voter in the state, the use of it was kind of disappointing. In some counties, you know, only a few hundred people uh, used it. We had the most here in Washington, the most uh, proportionately. We had 5,700 in the presidential primary, but it was down a bit for the August primary. But now it's gigantic. We have a huge turnout in the early voting compared with what we had before. And I think that going forward, this is going to be a significant uh, way people are going to be participating. Wow. Uh, do you have any sense? Can you give us, I know this number is probably changing as we're talking, but have hundreds of people voted as of today? Or are we talking thousands? Oh, certainly thousands. There are 15 early voting sites in the county, uh, six in the city of Ann Arbor, uh, one each in Milan and Bridgewater, two in, uh, in Ypsilanti Township, and then five for the rest of the county. The five are are operated by my office through the you know through an agreement with the local clerks, and the others are operated by those clerks, the clerks in those individual areas. Uh, but all of these sites are seeing, uh, in some cases, lines uh, and uh, and some en enthusiasm. I'd say so. I'm we're pleased. We're a little overwhelmed because right. just in terms of the crowd control, and also in terms of making sure that we have enough supplies, uh, because the. What we're doing with with early voting is ballot on demand. So you come in, you check in, they say, okay, you're in precinct 17, and they basically print off a ballot for you for precinct 17, which you take and then and vote and put it in the tabulator. But that requires, you know, again, having the supplies, having the right kind of paper for a ballot, having the toner and 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 so on. Toner cartridges are in short supply, so we're having you know some more overnighted. This is something that, that is not just in Washtenaw County, but in many places. Uh, the turnout has been fantastic. Ultimately, and the, the other the other choice is to give people the paper ballot that was that, that was printed for election day. And since everyone who votes early, it's one less vote for election day. So I think that's entirely appropriate. Do you think this is going to lead to shorter lines in the county next Tuesday? Definitely. Wow. Is there any way to know how many people in the county have voted at home on absentee ballots so far? Uh, last I heard, 1.4 million absentee ballots turned in statewide. And I'm sure that, that Washtenaw County is has more than its share, given the population that we have. Another thing that's a little bit new is that state-approved clerks are doing a little pre-processing of ballots. What does that allow local clerks' offices to do? When an absentee ballot is received, there's, there's what's called an absentee ballot counting board. Uh, and the counting board, which is staffed by poll workers, just, to, just like uh, in, in a precinct on Election Day, the poll workers verify the signatures on the ballots. They, they, uh, you know, essentially they, they, then they create a pile of ballots, and then they, they, they remove the the ballots, each one inside a secrecy sleeve from the envelopes. Ultimately, uh, you know, running them through the tabulator. Well, it's obviously it's a lot of it's a lot of paperwork, a lot of a lot of prep to do this, to, uh, especially the uh, checking. The voter signs the outside of the absentee ballot envelope, and those signatures have to be verified. 
uh, each one against the signature that's on file for that voter. The new state law basically makes it possible for, in, in jurisdictions above a certain size to do some of that pre-processing work before election day. That doesn't mean tabulating them, and it certainly doesn't mean that any results would be available. No results are ever available before 8 p.m. on Election Day when the polls close. Right. And it's nothing, not counting anything. It's just getting things ready for the count, right? Correct. Yeah. Have you run into any logistical or procedural issues other than the supply uh, the supply issues that you mentioned, just having enough toner cartridges and, and ballot paper and things that you would need to accommodate in-person early voting? Well, there's the state has had a contest for design of, a, of an I Voted sticker, and those stickers are very popular, particularly the one with the werewolf. And people are complaining to me that they went to early vote and that the site that they went to was out of the werewolf stickers. <laughs> uh, so I, I kind of wish that the state had made more of them. Maybe they will. The supply essentially that went out from the state to all the city and township clerks and uh, and to the early voting sites. So the amount of traffic at early voting sites obviously varies. So those sites might have different supplies of those of those of those stickers. Secretary Benson, if you're listening, send more werewolves next year. <laughs> yes. Have very many people in Washtenaw County opted to become election observers, either at polls or observing uh, tabulation processes for at local clerks? Well, we have a number of organizations. Uh, four organizations have filed uh, for the right to appoint challengers, what are called challengers are basically poll observers. And in addition to that, every political party has the power automatically to appoint challengers. So the I don't know how many uh, challengers each one each one of those entities will be bringing to the polls, but uh, we have had some at the uh, at the early voting sites, and there has been no problem. If anything, they've been helpful. Hmm. Uh, so we are we are uh, we're very pleased with that. They're, they you know, the challengers. There are certain rules about how what challengers can do and what they can't do. And so far, uh, uh, the challengers are observing those rules, and we are uh, uh, we're happy to have more eyes on the process. I, I guess anything can and sometimes does happen. But are you expecting an orderly day next Tuesday and onward through the tabulation process? I'm an optimist, so I think it'll be orderly. But uh, but if something happens, uh, uh, you know we're prepared. Uh, we have we have been through. Not just me, but all the local clerks and and their staffs and my staff have been through trainings uh, and tabletop exercises and discussions and so forth, workshops about how to address challenges that might come up, particularly but not exclusively on Election Day. You know, so, for example, there's a flood or there's a power outage or there's a storm or there's, uh, you know, or there's an attack of some kind. Uh, So the and these these workshops have been coordinated uh, by the state of Michigan, by the, the State Bureau of Elections, and with 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 things that they've gotten from the FBI and from other federal agencies. Uh, so I would say that we are uh, we're more we're better prepared for something happening on election day than we ever have been. But I'm 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 hoping it will turn out not to be necessary. In terms of the more natural disasters, I mean that is a thing. I want to say I believe there were some power outages in Macomb County in years past. Uh, during during elections. So, I mean, I guess that is something that you guys have to think about, even if most of us don't. That is absolutely a possibility. And there is this, the story that election officials all tell each other is about a precinct in Emmett County up north. The precinct was in a small building, like an old schoolhouse that had a door in the front and no other door. And, the, and, he, and the, there was a front porch on the building and a bear came and sat down on the front porch with its back to the door, completely blocking uh, any way to get in or out of the polling place. Uh, and the, uh, that story has been circulating for a number of years. I think it must have happened about 15 years ago. Unbelievable. Uh, the, the, the DNR came and took care of the bear. It was, they decided this was not normal bear behavior, so they, uh, they decided this bear had to be euthanized. Oh, my heart is with the bear, but I understand the vote must go on. Larry Kestenbaum, clerk of Washtenaw County, thank you so much for talking to us about this. You're very welcome. It's time for a short break. After that, we turn to operations in Macomb County. Stick around.
Support for Michigan Public's stateside podcast comes from Lake Trust Credit Union, working to empower financial well-being for Michigan consumers, businesses, and communities. Committed to financial solutions and advice to support people and families. More information at laketrust.org. As voting continues in cities and townships and counties all over Michigan, we're in a sort of new time when campaigns are doing their final competing for votes, even as hundreds of thousands of people have already cast their ballots. Early voting is meaning some new workflows for our county clerks. Anthony Forlini is clerk in Macomb County, of course, one of Michigan's most populous, and he joins us now. Tony, welcome to Stateside. It's good to have you. Well, thanks for having me. Did you say populous or popular? Because I think we're one of the most popular counties. Well, we'll put that on the tagline as well. It seems like that should be a bumper sticker. It should be. Make Macomb your home is our logo, so. There you go. There are a lot of new procedures this year that are geared toward helping folks in Michigan feel like they can vote a little bit more easily, hopefully not getting stuck in the first Tuesday of November in a huge line, as sometimes happens when there's high turnout in a big election year. Tell us a little bit about how no reason absentee ballots have been received. Did more people than usual ask for them in Macomb County? You know, I think we had a very high number. We sent 208,000 absentee voter ballots out. We received 143,000 back so far. So we had a high turn back of those numbers. And so it'll be interesting to see in the end when we get through this early voting, uh, we've had 48,000 people already early vote just in the first four days. And is that going to take away from Election Day? Or in my case, I'm going to take my absentee ballot and I'm going to bring it to the tabulator at my local community and put that into the tabulator. So I think it's going to take a little bit away from the AV ballots. We'll see. And I think it's it's certainly going to be allowing those people that like to vote in person to vote in person. And they got a total of 10 days to do it. So I think that's really a great thing for all citizens. We've talked to other clerks about getting the absentee ballots pre-processed. That's one of the other things that's new this year. Many have been glad, you know, again, from the from the processing perspective, that they've got a little bit more time to do some minimal things before the tabulation can begin next Tuesday. Can you explain what that entails? Sure. So the legislature, based on, you know, the concerns from all the local clerks, saying we need more time. There's so many people. For instance, we have 208,000 absentee ballots that went out. If all 208,000 come in, and now here it is, election day, they have to process all those all in one day so that the people that are interested in our elections, and I hope everybody is, will get their results in a timely fashion. So the legislature wisely allowed for the early tabulation, not not scoring, but tabulation. So they go through the ballots, the the machine, the tabulators keep the score within. And then at 8 o'clock or after 8 o'clock on election day, they hit the button and the score comes out. And so that really takes a lot of the pressure off of the local clerks. And I, I think it was very, very well received by all the clerks. I read that there is one jurisdiction in Macomb County that opted not to pre-process the city of Warren. Yes. I mean, that's one of the bigger towns in the county, isn't it? Yes, it is. Third largest in the state. Do you think it'll take substantially longer to get results in from Warren this year? Well, Warren has got four high-speed tabulators, so it's not going to be a tabulation problem. It might be a people problem of trying to open all these. Uh, They've got, uh, to date, uh, almost 19,000 absentee ballots come in, if everything goes well, they should be able to get it out. And we're hoping all the tabulators work and nothing breaks down. You know, these are all factors that come into play. I think if she's well-organized, and she can be, if she's well-organized, she can get those results in hopefully a timely fashion. It warns an outlier in in doing it this way. So we'll see. We'll see. She being uh, Sonia Bufa, the clerk in City of Warren. Obviously, there are lots of city clerks and township clerks that you work with. And then there's everybody who works in your office. What kinds of challenges are you and your staff preparing for going into Tuesday? You know, going into Tuesday, for instance, we just ordered, I think, uh, 40,000 
ballot on demands. There's been such an incredible demand. It exceeded everybody's expectations, and they're being delivered the ballot on demands so that we can supply all the local clerks with a proper amount of paper and they don't run out next weekend. That's how successful this has been. And so that was a challenge for us. And we knew it Sunday morning, we had some conversations and the conversations were around the fact that, hey, do you think you ordered enough paper? It caused some doubt amongst them. And so after we saw the huge results again on Monday, Monday actually had more early voters than on Sunday. Wow. So, and, and Tuesday also was more than Sunday. We're seeing a, just a tremendous turnout and higher than we ever expected as far as voter turnout. I heard what you said that there actually weren't as many early voters and just lower turnout overall for the presidential primary last winter and the August primary. But do you feel you learned anything in the first two elections of this year about how people are doing with the new procedures like early voting and no reason absentee? Yeah, you know, there was very low turnout in the first two. And I'm glad there was because there was a learning curve, right, for everybody from the state to the county and to the local clerks. So having a low turnout allowed them to work through some new processes, staffing. I don't know that anything would have prepared them for the turnout that we ended up having, but I'm very proud of all our clerks. I think they've done a great job. There were some backups in a few communities because the turnout was incredible. But uh, they've worked through that, and and now it's pretty steady now. And they're, they're gearing up for this weekend because they think that this weekend could be a big day also. Yeah. Back in August, there were four people in St. Clair Shores who cast absentee ballots and then showed up to vote in person. Those folks are now facing federal charges that the county prosecutor is is overseeing because of this. Do you have any understanding of what happened in those cases? Well, you know, it's first off, it's an ongoing investigation. Um, so I really can't comment into much detail, but they did absentee vote. They came in and voted a second time, uh, which is a felony. And it's my understanding that the worker was alerted that this person had already voted. So the system did catch it. The unfortunate thing is they overrode the system, from what I understand, and allowed the second vote to happen. It's really unusual for those things to happen. Was it a mistake? Uh, that's for the courts and the uh, and, I, and I, in my own personal belief, it, it probably was. But I'm not the one that does the investigations. We're just in the business of being transparent and being thorough and making sure we run good elections. And that's my focus. You know, what happened there um, happened, right? And, and so it was all exposed. We put it out there. And the good news is our system does work. If you vote twice, you will be caught. And then it's going to be up to the law enforcement prosecutor's office or the uh, attorney general to determine what goes on after that. There have been years in the past when clerks have been strapped for poll workers. Can I just ask how that's been working out lately now that there are more Michiganders who are voting absentee and maybe taking advantage of different different ways of voting? So let's address the poll workers. Let's address what we've done in the county. We never used to be in the training business. I've been at this for four years now, and early on I realized there's an education issue for poll workers and for everybody. And and so we took on the task of training, and we've trained over 500 people to be poll workers in in the last four years. And that's, that's a huge commitment on my staff. It's a huge commitment on our people. We're developing new material, and we're we're getting pretty good at it. As a matter of fact, if you don't know your stuff, we're not going to pass you along to a local clerk. We've had people that had to take it three times to make sure they got it right because when we send somebody to a local clerk, the expectation is they're ready to go. And the other thing we offer is diversification because you have to have one Democrat and one Republican in each polling location, at least. And some communities have trouble finding Democrats, and other communities have trouble finding Republicans. This, see, I wouldn't have expected that to be a problem in Macomb County, where there's lots of both. But keep in mind, you know, each community within themselves, you know, the southern end of Macomb County tends to be a little bit more Democrat, and the northern part tends to be a little bit more Republican. So being the county clerk, I can offer that 
ability to, to get from a bigger pool and mix that pool up and allow people to find the Democrats that they were looking for or find the Republicans. And that's a pool, unfortunately, I don't think Wayne County has because they tend to trend more Democrat. So to find enough Republicans is a real challenge for them. I take it then it's not as hard as maybe it has been in some years to find people who want to work the polls? It's always a challenge. But, you know, we have been able to supplement to the point where clerks aren't going to be scrambling and they're not going to be in a panic because we do have people for them. So there's the process of making sure people get their ballots cast in an orderly fashion. There's the process of tabulating the votes. And then another thing clerks do is the process of reporting in the votes. There are some new procedures there as well. Are you confident that all the races can report in in a timely fashion this year? Well, if you define timely as before 6 a.m. Wednesday, I'm fairly confident we're going to be there. If you're saying it's going to be at 8.30 p.m. Tuesday, no, it ain't going to happen. Two-thirds, I'm going to think two-thirds or maybe three-quarters of the state, the modems were removed by the Secretary of State, Macomb and Wayne County included. Oakland County was able to keep theirs because the manufacturer that they purchased years ago was HART, H-A-R-T, and they are still allowed because they're certified nationally, their modems, they were able to continue on, which I'm not happy about because the Secretary of State said we were going to have everybody was going to be removed. So it, it gives the illusion that certain counties are really fast and others take their good old time. That's not the case because now they have to manually take out the memory stick that's in each tabulator, put it in a security envelope, and drive it to the county, which takes time. So we're going to see, I think I think you might see Macomb County start to report out sometime around 9.30 and beyond. Some clerks are very good at getting their sticks to us immediately. Others take a little bit longer. And, and you know, it, and it's got to balance out. The local clerks have to balance out their tabulators, make sure everything's all set before they come to us. So some are going to take a little longer. And, and, and some are going to report what they have and then come back later when they finish up with their balancing. So if you're going to have a party Tuesday night, I think it might be a later party. My guest today has been Tony Forlini. He is clerk and register of deeds in Macomb County. Tony, thank you so much and good luck next Tuesday. Thank you, April. And that's the Stateside Podcast for today. I'm April Bear. You can find more episodes and lots and lots of election tools at michiganpublic.org. Today's podcast was produced by Ronia Kevinsug. Other producers on our show are Mike Blank, April Van Buren, and our show's director, Mercedes Mejia. Our executive producer is Laura Weber Davis. Music for this pod episode came from Blue Dot Sessions and from Audio Network. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.